Hi guys, it's Mandy from Mandy Lee Plays, and in this video, I'm gonna give you an update of the games I beat, the games I'm currently playing, and the games that I want to play in the future. So essentially, this video is keeping you guys up to date and holding myself accountable for the games that I beat. So after my last gaming update, I beat, drum roll please, a total of three games. Yes, only three games I beat, but actually no but. There's not excusing that poor turnaround time. I should have beaten more games, but I just had a lot going on these past few months. So yeah, sissy numbers aside, I did get to experience a lot of good games that really resonated with me and that I really loved. None of the games on this list are really bad games. They were actually really good. But without further ado, let's go through all the games that I beat. The first game I beat is Apollo Justice. Now there are three games in this pack, but I only beat one which is Apollo Justice the first one and I actually really enjoyed it it's not really looked upon favorably by the fandom especially in comparison to the original Phoenix Wright trilogy but it is something different and it is something good now Apollo Justice Ace Attorney is the fourth game in the Ace Attorney series now as much as I love Apollo as a character I could also see why he's not everybody's favorite especially compared to Phoenix Wright I did really love the first case it really set the tone of what the game is about to offer but that that being said, I think the game peaked too early because the first case was really, really good. Like it was one of the best ones and they didn't really back it up. And it really sets the tone on what the game is going to be about and what's the focus. Too bad the focus is not really Apollo, but for Phoenix Wright. Apollo Justice, yeah, that's his name, is a new and up and coming defense attorney. And due to what happens in the first trial, he then works for Phoenix Wright and Phoenix Wright is um hobo. A lot of people in the fandom call him hobo phoenix because he looks like a hobo so this whole game is piecing together what happened to phoenix right and things revolving apollo now my favorite case in the game is the first case it set the bar really really high with a lot of twists and turns and backstabbing well more like blunt force trauma than stabbings honestly and while the trials are good they never get as good as the first trial which is a big oof i hated hated case three i i really don't like it it is stupid it is gimmicky it makes no sense and there's just a lot of plot contrivances that just don't go. It has to be the dumbest case in all of Ace Attorney. This case makes Big Top from the original games look like a masterpiece. And if I have to hear that damn song one more time, I swear, ugh, it's annoying. Lucky for me though, the second case and the fourth case really carried the rest of the game. Now I fully understand why people don't like this entry, mainly because Apollo is a good character but is overshadowed by Phoenix Wright. Your sidekick character is not my I miss Maya, but it's another character called Trucy. Now Trucy and Apollo have this cool dynamic going on and their banter is pretty funny. Phoenix Wright games usually have a supernatural twist or inclusion of something and in Apollo Justice it's this focus system which I really really did not like. But other than that, Gameplay wise, it's typically the same as the original trilogy, but I did like the story or the overarching story between the cases. And that is basically what evidence do we take as fact? It really puts into question the justice system and the corruption within it. Overall, it was a great game and I highly recommend, especially if you just got off of the original Phoenix Wright trilogy. It's nothing big or grand, but it was still fun and enjoyable. Alrighty, now the next one is one of my streaming games and that is Chrono Trigger. Now to preface this, I am making a review for Chrono Trigger, but that one's more of a video essay kind of thing and it's not really done yet. But in the meantime, I'll tell you some of my thoughts. Now this is my first time playing Chrono Trigger. I've heard of this game from many people and it's on many lists of the top 10 best JRPGs ever. So I thought, you know what, let me play it. To keep this brief though, I love the game a lot. There's a lot of cool concepts and storylines where I just understand why people love this game so so much. But then there are some head scratches where I'm just like, what is this game really about? Most of the game story kind of makes sense towards the end. The one thing I feel like this game does really, really well is portraying time traveling. They do it so good because they don't really focus on it too much. And the time travel itself is a very linear style time travel where you go to one point, you fix something, and it fixes it in the future. It's really simple and honestly, I love it for the game. And I heard that Chrono Cross really didn't take notes on this because a lot of people say it's really convoluted. Now story-wise I still have some research to do because there's like a bajillion different endings but like all good time traveling movies or games or 
book. It's very satisfying to see things go full circle. Now, I had the unfortunate experience of playing the Steam version of the game. Now, the Steam version is considered the worst version, oddly enough, because of a lot of things. But for me personally, I beat the last boss and then while the credits were rolling, the game crashed. You could see my soul leave from my body when I was streaming that. I did go back and beat levels again, but I was pissed. And I do want to thank everyone who was there and cheering me on to try try again. Now the one thing I appreciated about this game was there's no random encounters. I mean monsters come at you randomly, but most of the monsters are kind of choreographed to come out at a certain time. And if you go leave that area and come back in, they respawn as well. The characters were really fun and they had their own backstory to them and they're just really fleshed out especially compared to Chrono. Chrono is not really a character per se, it's a self insert which made one event not as eventful. So overall, I do understand why this game is so good and it's honestly a very good game. Is it my top 5? Probably not, but I can see the hype behind it. And I could confidently say Chrono Trigger is a timeless classic. Yay! I love when puns work out. And stay tuned for my review review of this game. Next game on the list is actually a review code from Capcom. And that is for Monster Hunter Stories. Monster Hunter Stories is actually a port from the 3DS game. A lot of people came into my stream saying, wow, this looks like a 3DS game. And I'm like, well, yeah, it kind of is. The first thing I would like to know is that the graphics are very cutesy. You get to customize your own character, different hair, different eyes, all that good stuff. And the cartoony versions just look adorable, especially the baby monsters now the baby monsters stay baby for like a second but you get to see them in the egg and they're just really really tiny and it makes the ugliest monsters look adorable except for kizu now this game is meant to be light-hearted you could think about it like it's a kid's version of monster hunter where instead of monster hunting you actually recruit monsters so you could fight side by side instead of the original monster hunting game where you just basically kill the monster for parts there's even a point in the games where there's a huge rift between right Riders and hunters, where hunters, I guess, is just I look at a monster and I just kill it. Whereas riders try to at least befriend the monster and capturing monster eggs. So you start off at your home village and everything's all good and dandy, but then this Nagakuga monster just runs rapid throughout the village and it kills one of your friend's mom. So your fun, lighthearted friend now turned into Sasuke apparently. So while you took the writer's exam because you love monsters and you want to explore the world, your friend over here just wants to kill monsters and doesn't really care. Oh, and we also meet this weird cat called Navi. Now he has his own stories and why he's weirder than your average Palico cat, but he's very cool and he's essentially your mouthpiece because your protagonist is silent. Now the story of Monster Hunter stories is basically you're exploring the world and trying to figure out how to eliminate the blight. And the blight is basically this black stuff that's killing life and it drives a lot of monsters crazy where they start to destroy stuff. Now the gameplay is a bit weird it's kind of this rock paper scissors kind of thing it's pretty fun it's a turn-based style mechanic but you fight alongside with your monsters now there is this thing called kinship and kinship levels so essentially the kinship is what makes a rider bond with monsters and when you battle with your monsters your kinship level increases and then when that happens you could do an all-out attack and i love how they're crafted based on the monsters overall i really enjoyed this game as a fan of the monster hunter series it was nice to have a new take on the monster hunter formula and it's a very cute enjoyable short rpg this game took me like around 20 to 22 hours and i highly recommend you guys check it out especially if you love the monster hunter series all right so those were all the games that i beat it's not that much but i did get a lot done and i did play really really good games now time for the games that i'm currently playing first we're starting with luigi's mansion 2 now this is actually a review code provided by nintendo so thank you nintendo and it was actually my first review code from nintendo Woo! Ooh, your girl's getting somewhere. Hopefully it's good. I'm really enjoying streaming this game for you guys and it's honestly really really fun. I love the Luigi's Mansion series. I played the first one. I'm playing right now the second one and I love the third one. Anyways, this is a remake of the original Luigi's Mansion 2 that came out for the 3DS. Now story-wise, you get to play as Luigi again coming back from Luigi's Mansion, the first one. So essentially, E-Gag is enjoying all the luxuries that come with free labor. So he's basically using 
using the ghost to help him and they're all being controlled by this moon called the dark moon but then king boo arrives and he breaks the dark moon and that makes all the ghosts who are helping Igad go hostile okay hostile is such a strong word they basically do pranks on you most of the time now Igad does not like that his free labor is gone so he coerces luigi basically to help him find the pieces of the dark moon yeah i don't really like Igag. he is secretly the final boss jk jk he's not one critique that i have so far is that the ghosts seem very very generic i would have wished that they had less ghosts but then have the ghosts that are there have a backstory have a reason why they're there maybe they live there maybe they work there maybe there's a dark past on why everyone's a ghost now not all the ghosts need to have a big backstory or whatever but the bigger ghosts should have in my opinion anyways that's all i have to say for luigi's mansion 2. on to the next one and that is cold steel i finished chapter one in cold steel now this game is a slow burner i'm really enjoying the little task here and there but it does take time to ramp up so when i started the game i was getting curb stomped by the enemy non-stop so i was just like holy cow am i doing something wrong but then i figured out that turn manipulation is good so i did that and now the battles are a whole lot easier guess i should have read the tutorials but overall i'm having a great time if you want a more relaxing game to get into that you could take your time with then cold steel is for you the next game on this list is spy x anya because i do love spy x family spy x anya is a game where you're Anya and you're going through her perspective on the day-to-day -day lives of her parents and you have to forge new memories. Now for the games I want to get to, nothing really exciting right now. I am really excited for Zelda and all the other good games coming out soon. And let me know what games that you beat you're playing right now or games that you're excited for in the comments down below. I would love to hear it. So that is it for today's video. If you guys enjoyed it, please hit that like button. And if you guys love my video and would love to see more, then please hit that subscribe button. I would, would appreciate it. I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of the day. And as always, play a good game. Peace, peace.